Remar nurses. My name is Kimberly Gibson Jones, and I just took my next gen NCLEX yesterday, July 1st, 2023, and I passed in 85 questions. To God be the glory. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to Nurse Regina and her husband, Mark, and to the Remar family. I use the Quick Facts for NCLEX. I also use the Next Generation one, and I also use the V2 virtual trainer. Oh my goodness. When you do this program, you're going to leave it feeling prepared. Um, you're not going to feel like you have all these special tricks and all these things that people try to tell you in other programs. You want to leave it feeling that you're prepared because you want to know content and you want to actually feel like you're a better critically thinking nurse. It's, um, it's definitely worth the investment. My journey was not easy. This was my third attempt. I graduated from nursing school in May 2022. Um, I didn't even get my... ATT code until November. I took the first took the test the first time November 2022, and I did not pass. My response was completely un unacceptable. I'm like what? When I when I saw the failure, I said, "What, Lord? Like what is going on? Me?" But anyway, I failed that test, and I used ATI. I used um, Mark Clinic, and I used UWorld. So then I took the test a second time, February 2023. I used Alpha Slice program. I was not successful. Um, then I went to Remar when my when my cousins told me about this program, and it actually is the best program out there. You would be wrong if you didn't sign up for this program. Um, it's, it's really helped me. And one of the things that I really love about it is that it's God-centered, that Professor Regina and her husband are praying people, that this is actually a ministry. And when I joined the Remar University, I learned that, you know, there are nurses from all around the world joining this program. And there are several people who share their success stories by attending this um, university and by participating in this program. So thank you to Professor Regina and to Mark for sacrificing all your time to give back to us uh, nursing students. You are absolutely amazing. I'm so excited. And my journey, like I said, was not easy. You know, I was um, entering nursing school at the, at the older age, at the age of 50, um, preparing for the NCLEX. Um, I found out that my sister had cancer. I had sacrificed every waking moment trying to pass this NCLEX, um, even with myself, neglecting my health, my screening. I even had cancer scare myself. Um, thank God it didn't turn out that way, but I was negligent trying to prepare for this test and for me only not to even pass. So I'm so grateful that I passed this time. Um, and I just have something to say to the Remar nurse family and you know what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna come closer so you can hear me. You can, you will, and you must pass your NCLEX. But you know what you gonna do? What you gonna do? You're gonna follow instructions. And not only are you gonna follow the instructions, you're gonna pray. You're gonna be okay. God is the God of the impossible. He's no respect that persons. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. And I wish you all the best in your journey. Thank you. To God be the glory. I took the test on May 31st and oh my God, I am so glad and so grateful for Remar Nurse. I did the V2, I ordered the quick, quick facts and it really, really, really helped me a lot. I had so much going on. I didn't know if I was going to get through it, but I made it through it. My grandmother passed away on May 19th. My test was scheduled for May 31st, but I pushed through and I took the test anyway. I was like, I'm not going to postpone it. I'm going to, I've been studying and I'm going to go ahead and take the test. So I thank God for you guys and for your material. Like it was very, very helpful. When I tell you that the material was very, very helpful, it was very, very helpful. So hint hint <laughs> um i did the cat test and i'm so crazy and i know you say don't do all the studying but i was just doing too much studying i like i was up the morning of my test i know you said don't do this but the morning of my test 
I got up and I started doing more questions, like next gen questions, because I lost kind of like some days from the passing of my grandmother. So I was still like, I had to go in overdrive and do some extra. But I just want to let you know that the tech material was so helpful. And I thank God that you created the V2, the quick facts. It was helpful. And I just want to thank you so much. And I appreciate you and Mark for creating this program. Amazing, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to, welcome to Winning Wednesday, how to pass NCLEX. All of it is tonight. We're going to talk about cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Of course, CPR. CPR is a major topic for the exam. If you have, if you have the quick facts for NCLEX, next gen version, CPR is in there. It's been redone. It's reimagined. Guys, I also need to tell you this. Aliens are real. Aliens are real. That's what they're saying all over the news. And so we as nurses have to consider, are these going to be the next group of inpatients? Is this going to be the next patient population that we must be culturally sensitive on? There's so much to know. Is there going to be another quick facts for aliens? I don't know. I'm saying all this to be funny, but at the end of the day, what I'm trying to impress upon you guys is that the work of the nurse is never done. There is no time to sleep um, because we have more learning to do. And if you have not made your stance in the NCLEX review, the sale price for the V2 is ending. Is ending for real this time <laughs> and just a few more days. So get in the V2, study with me. Let's take this thing to the next level. We got CPR on tonight. We got CPR on tonight. Let's get into it. Hey, everybody from all over. We got over 200 nurses joining tonight. Amazing. All right. So CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Well, what does it consist of? Two things. Two things. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth respirations and the very important chest compressions. Are you guys familiar with this topic? Do you feel comfortable about the principles of CPR. If you have not studied this, you're in luck because we're going to go over it tonight. All right. So CPR, two things, okay? Two things. They are mouth-to-mouth -mouth res respirations and chest compressions. And so what it does is it allows, it continues to allow oxygenated blood to circulate to vital organs such as the brain and the heart. Very important. And essentially CPR keeps the person alive until more advanced procedures such as defibrillation or an electric shock can be done to the chest to treat cardiac arrest. I wanna stop here and cover two teaching points, but I wanna say hey to Courtney who got on here and says, Thanks, Regina. Your V2, everybody say congratulations to Courtney, please. Your V2 in Quick Facts is truly a blessing for the NCLEX. I'm a repeat test taker, but after joining your program, I can proudly say my favorite words. I'm a Remar nurse. Thank God. And thank you, Remar. Congratulations. This is truly a testimony that needs to be spread out. Your repeat test taker. You didn't give up. You got through my V2 program, which is a challenge and quick facts too. So you did both of these programs, guys. Get in so you can get your nursing license. You can get your nursing license. Um, Courtney is on here to encourage somebody on today. So we were talking about CPR being the way for a patient to sustain life when they have experienced cardiac arrest. So defibrillation is one of the treatments for cardiac arrest. I just want to pause for the cause because you should know what defibrillation is. You should absolutely know what that means. When we defibrillate a patient, are we stopping their heart or are we starting their heart? Basic safety right here. When we defibrillate a patient, are we stopping their heart or are we starting it? What do you guys say? Oh, this is, this is critical thinking too. If you've never defibrillated somebody as well. I see the comments on the screen. Defibrillation. Ooh, and I see mixed comments here, which I'm glad that I stopped for this point because this is something when I'm doing my classes. Um, 
And I also talk about this in V2. You want to clear this up for sure. You want to clear this up. Defibrillation, defibrillation or even cardioversion. Okay. Defibrillation or cardioversion. I like it. That's what you're trying to do. I see. Okay. Good job, guys. These comments are really good. We are starting their heart. We, we are restarting their heart. Okay. So we give them, I like that, give them a shock to start it. Okay. Good job. Good foundational safety point here. If you didn't know it, write it down. Because again, we're doing CPR because they're in cardiac arrest. So arrest meaning that it is not happening. It's not able to happen. Now, that's fine. Let's get through that. So the main components, the main components of CPR are the C4 compression. Got that? The C4 compression. All right. So we're pushing hard and fast in the center of our patient's chest. Also, A is for airways. We do have to. We do have to be mindful of our patient's airway. We are doing the uh, tilting the victim's head, the back of the head, and lifting their chin to open the airways. That's if we don't suspect any spinal cord injuries. Breathing, giving two mouth-to-mouth -mouth rescue breaths, all right? And so this is to be done. Usually, it's best performed when there is a multi resp Fewer coordinated team. However, it can be done with just one person. Okay, just one person. It just takes a different level of training if you want to have high proficiency CPR. High quality CPR skills that you guys need to know for an adult. We need to assess the breathing and a pulse. And so here, make note of this here we normally say when we talk about delegation and assignment we normally say that lpns and nurses aides do not assess right we are big on that we know that the lpn cannot do any assessment and the cna cannot do any assessment that's my alarm sorry <laughs> so what do you do here when it says in order to perform cpr you have to assess if there is a breathing pattern or a pulse. So everybody here is an exception to the terminology because in fact, your PN and your nurse's aide, they are assessing in this moment, okay? So to minimize a delay in starting CPR, you should assess breathing at the same time as you check the pulse. This should take at least five seconds, but no more than 10 seconds. Checking for the what pulse, the carotid pulse of the adult. It is the brachial pulse for the um, for the infant. And so to perform a pulse check on an adult, feel for the carotid pulse. Do not feel definitely for, if you do not feel definitely a pulse within 10 seconds, you need to start, okay? You need to start CPR with, 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 chest compressions. The chest compressions are extremely important. And again, guys, there is there are age parameters. There is certain information you need to know for the adult, for the child one to puberty, and for the essentially the newborn. This is the chart on your um, next gen quick facts. It's on page 21 familiarize yourself with it. Okay. Familiarize yourself with it. Shout out to Kamala Deep Carr. I remember this name very well. I'm so proud of you. So, so proud of you. I'm going to miss you. Hi, Regina. I passed my NCLEX test PM with Remar. Thank you so much. With God, everything is possible. Oh, so good. Congratulations. Um, congratulations. Whew. Amazing. All right. So we are talking about um, the time limits here. Notice the time limits of when you need to start and get moving. You don't have a lot of time to do this. It's very important to the safety of the patient that you do this with haste. Now let's talk about the performing high quality chest um, compressions, positioning the victim. So we position the victim on um, a very firm, flat surface face up. 
all right, such as the floor, or typically if you're working in a hospital, the hospitals will have the board that comes out of the bed, you stick it underneath the patient's back. Very important because NCLEX may put you in a scenario where they say your patient is in the bed and you need to do chest compressions. So the reason why we have a firm flat surface such as the floor or a backboard, I'm reading, this will help ensure that the chest compressions are as effective as possible. If the victim is on a soft surface, such as a mattress, the force from the chest compressions, okay? The force from the chest compressions will simply push the victim's body into the soft surface. A firm surface allows compressions of the chest and the heart to create adequate blood flow. All right. Now, compression to ventilation ratio. How much should we be doing in compressions? How much ventilation or respirations do we need to give? Very important. Single rescuers, that means one person, should use the compression to ventilation ratio of 30 to two breaths. 30 to two. So 30 compressions, two breaths when giving CPR to victims of any age. Yes. And as a new nurse, I'll just say this, as a new nurse, I worked on a cardiac floor and I remember being so scared to give chest compressions to a patient that was in cardiac arrest. And I went to go start the compressions while the patient was in bed. And my preceptor had to say, get the board, get the board. And I was just so, I was so nervous that I just wanted to start the chest compressions and I didn't have a board ready for my patient's back. So just remember that. Um, and also pray that you get a preceptor that's going to really help you. Because when you're a nurse, you make mistakes. It's definitely going to happen, but it should be in an environment where you don't get bullied and you're able to learn. Hey, I got a beautiful testimony here. Mm, nurse Perpetua. Did I say that right? Hi, everyone. Officially a Remar nurse. Let me read this. I passed my NCLEX on my second attempt on the 11th of January after using V2 and QuickFax. Thank you so much, Regina and Mark and all Team Remar. That's you guys, your Team Remar. Uh, may God bless you and keep you all in Jesus' name. I'm super grateful. I have four case studies and one of it was on dementia which you taught during Remar Nurse University, and I licked it like stew. <laughs> I passed with 85 questions. Wish I could see and hug you. Love you. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Hey, Remar Nurse University was so much fun. Um, and so if you missed it, we had a good old time. And so I'm glad that that study group session helped you. And I'm glad that we do our study group sessions every night. And I'm so grateful for you. So God bless you on your journey to becoming a, a, a licensed nurse. You made it over. Now you got to start working. And we're really proud of you. Really, really proud of you. Congratulations. So when we talk about um, when we talk about the compression to ventilation ratio is 30 to 2. Yes, if you have passed with Remar, I have a gift for you. Please go to remarnurse.com forward slash party. All right forward slash party to get your gift if you pass using Remar. Love to see you. Love to see you there. Okay. Um, let's move on to compression rate. Okay. Compression rate. So you compress at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions a minute. This rate is the same for compressions in all cardiac arrest victims. You need to get to this amount of beats in order to have adequate circulation. And, and look, when you look at this, what would you, what would you say? How would we classify this heart rate for our patients? We would say that, you know, this makes the patient tachycardic, but because the patient has no blood pressure and no pulse, you kind of have to overcompensate. So you have to put the patient in a tachycardic state. So don't be afraid to get those pumps in there. Also, how far do you go down? Oh my goodness. These are really great select all that apply questions. So if you're compressing the chest, it needs to at least be five centimeters. In quick facts, I have it in inches, two to 2.4 inches. As you practice this skill, remember that chest compressions 
are most often too shallow than too deep because we are afraid we don't want to hurt the patient. But honestly, you um, you need to press down. All right. It's possible to compress too deeply, but more than likely, you need to really pump the patient. Compressing the chest more than six centimeters in adults may decrease the effectiveness of the compression and cause injury. Using a CPR quality feedback device can help you reach the optimum compression of five to six centimeters. But honestly, you know, it's nice to have equipment. It's nice to have people around to tell you that you're doing good. But you guys know that if adequate chest compressions are done, Especially, you know, if you're if you're trying to save a person's life, when you press down on the patient, you should be pressing at a rate and a force that what happens is sometimes ribs are broken or the sternum of the patient is broken because you have to press down to get to that organ. So in CPR, are there, you know, are there instances of the patient you know, being hurt, yes, but you have to think, I have to get my patient's brain oxygen or they're not going to be well. They're not going to be well. Chest recoil. Allow the chest to recoil, which is re-expand completely after each compression. Chest recoil allows blood to flow into the heart. Incomplete chest recoil reduces the filling of the heart between chest compressions, okay, and reduces blood flow created by the chest compressions. To help ensure complete recoil, avoid leaning on the chest between compressions. You have to be getting up off of your patient. You need to be physically fit in order to do this. You cannot be tired and leaning on your patient the entire time. You're not going to get the results, Your or more likely your patient is not going to get the results that they need. So chest compression and chest recoil times should be about equal, all right? And they even have this, I don't know, have you guys seen them in the airport? They have the CPR stations and you can actually practice on a CPR mannequin in the airports. I think that's so cool. They have them there now. We'll just talk a little bit about um, interruptions in chest compressions. Minimizing interruptions in chest compressions. This is a very important. So uh, the shorter duration of interruptions in chest compressions is associated with better outcomes. The proportion of time that rescuers perform chest compressions during CPR is called chest compression fraction. Okay, A CCF of at least 60% increases the likelihood of R-O-S-C. Who knows what R-O-S-C is? In cardiology nursing, when you're doing CPR, R-O-S-C is the goal. That is what you want to have happen ideally during CPR. If you know what that is, put that in the comments and I'll, I'll post it. So shock success and survival to hospital discharge. So with good teamwork and training, rescuers can often achieve 80% or greater. This should be the goal in all team resuscitation events. Remember, do not move the victim if CPR is in progress unless the victim is in a dangerous environment such as burning building or you believe you cannot perform CPR effectively under the current circumstances. So yeah, we don't want to move our patient because this is going to shift all of their blood flow. This can make things very difficult for you to establish good care. Good job. R-O-C-S, return of spontaneous um, yes, circulation, return of spontaneous circulation. Good job. Okay. Giving breaths. What do we use? We use the head tilt, chin lift. Steps to perform a head tilt, chin lift. Place one hand under the victim's fore, one hand on the victim's forehead and push with your palm to tilt the head back. Place the fingers on the other hand under the bony part of the lower jaw near the chin. 
lift the jaw to bring the chin forward. This is going to open the airway. All right. Now you use the jaw thrust when the head tilt chin lift doesn't work or most important for NCLEX, you suspect a spinal injury, use the jaw thrust remove rem maneuver. And so this is just how do you do it? Steps to perform the jaw thrust. You position yourself at the victim's head. You get in the right position. Place one hand on each side of the victim's head. You may rest your elbows on the surface where the victim is lying if you want to put your elbows down. But what you're doing is you're placing your finger under the angle of the victim's lower jaw. You see how you have the four fingers there to support the lower jaw? And then you lift with both hands, displacing the jaw forward. And so you're opening the airway that way. So if the victim's lips are closed, all right, you push the lower jaw with your thumb to open the lips. And this is all just to protect the head, all right? Okay, protect the head. Now, um, if the jaw thrust does not open, this is very important. If the jaw thrust does not open, then you need to use the chin lift. And I put this on here because you know how NCLEX does critical thinking. You know how they do critical thinking. And they're going to say, your patient has a suspected spinal cord injury. However, um, so the patient has a, a, a facial trauma and you're unable to do the jaw thrust maneuver. The jaws won't thrust. What should the nurse do? Okay. So because we learn, don't do the, you know, the head lift, chin lift and spinal cord injuries, head tilt, chin lift. A lot of nurses will say, well, we don't know what to do. You know, like we don't do anything. We turn the patient, we roll the patient. At this point, you have to, you have to consider if the negatives of a spinal cord injury outweigh the positives of having an open airway. So you're going to have to do what we were told not to do. And in real life situations, the overall goal is to help the patient survive. So you would do the head tilt, chin, lift, okay? Bag mass ventilation technique. You need a bag mass device, okay? Also called an AMBU bag. Proper placement over the patient, always covering what two things? Always covering the nose and the mouth. You need to cover both of them, okay? EC clamp technique of holding the mass while lifting the jaw. Two rescuers are required for bag mass ventilation. Okay. okay. So when you have multiple rescuers, it's always better because you can perform simultaneous tasks during a resuscitation attempt. Usually you have better outcomes. And so the teams, when giving compressions, rescuers should switch compressions after every five cycles, okay, of CPR or every two minutes. Um, and so this is important to remember because you get tired and you start to not, um, you know, start, start to not do quality care. And the second thing is as additional rescuers arrive, they can help with back mass ventilation and compression, or hopefully somebody has somebody is using or bringing the AED and other emergency equipment. That's the goal because you never want to do CPR forever. You always want to transition out of it. And so this is the BLS algorithm. I'm not going to go too much in detail. Like I said, there's a chart on this in Quick Facts for everybody to go over. Uh, and, you know, also ultimately you got to know essentially the steps, the steps of doing CPR and then you also need to know those numbers. Those numbers are very important. And they differ between adults, pediatrics, and infants. And you got to know the difference. All right. It's, it's a must for you to know the difference. So make sure you take time. Because even, even if you are not a registered nurse or practical nurse, you still are expected to do CPR if you're a nurse's aide. Okay, you're still expected to know CPR. And so you have to, as nurses, teach the nurses' aides how to do this appropriately. So this is something that you must, you know, you definitely must, must, must 
have memorized. Okay, um, and so here, again, like I said, this is also following up with the BLS algorithm. I guess I can just go over it. Um, so first thing you always do, you want to make sure everything is safe, check the responsiveness, shout out for help nearby, activating the emergency response system. You want to get other people involved as quickly as possible, as well as having those people or being able to get AED emergency equipment. OK, so this, the idea is that you're doing all of these things as quickly and as simultaneously as possible. And then you are feeling for normal breathing and feeling for a normal pulse. OK, if you have that, great. Let's just wait till emergency responders arrive. If you don't have that, you need to look for breathing only or gasping because those are important signs. Now, if there's no breathing, no pulse, then what you have to do as a single rescuer you know, you are starting your chest compressions, all right? You're checking your pulse every two minutes. And if the patient, if the patient has, all right, an OV, uh, opioid, opioid symptoms, all right, then you are at, you need to, you need to administer naloxone. Everybody know what naloxone is for, okay? Everybody know what naloxone is for, and you should know how to give this medication, all right? Write that down if you don't know it. Naloxone, you got it. Thanks, Patience. <laughs> Patience is doing my ad hoc notes. I love it. I love it. All right, so starting CPR, 30 compressions in two breaths until the AED arrives. If it's a shockable rhythm, give a shock. If it's not a shockable rhythm, keep on going with CPR, okay? Keep on going with CPR. Question time. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So, all right. A nurse witnesses a man on the street, unresponsive and lying on the floor. The nurse should start chest compressions within how many seconds from recognition of cardiac arrest? It is. Is it number one, 10 seconds? Number two, 20 seconds? Number three, six seconds, or number four, 15 seconds. Hey, this is how you test your content knowledge. Okay, this is how you test your content knowledge by going over the content and then asking yourself questions. That's how, okay? Then ask yourself questions, that's how. I see a lot of people picking, let me see what I have here on the screen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we all on one accord tonight? Kinda. Keep those comments coming in. I'm so happy that you are here tonight on Winning Wednesday. The correct answer. Gotta be 10 seconds on this one. If a pulse is not identified within 10 seconds, immediately begin administering CPR. Start with chest compressions. Compressions should occur at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute with a depth of two inches. Use a compression to ventilation ratio of 30 to two, of 30 to two. You guys got it. Good job. Okay, here we go. How about this one? A 55-year-old woman collapses and becomes unresponsive. The nurse witnesses her collapse and is the first rescuer at the scene where the woman is lying motionless on the floor which is the first action she should take in this situation. Number one, activate the emergency response. Two, start high quality CPR. Three, provide rescue breaths. Four, verify that the scene is safe. Come on in, get it to win it. I love it. I love it. Nurses from all over, rep your set. Where are you from tonight? Let me see. Everybody on the line. Ooh, I, I tricked some people. I threw in a distractor here. The correct answer, though, the correct answer is number four. Oh, my goodness. The correct answer is number four. I got Mississippi in the house answering these questions, right? Florida, as always, good to have you, Keisha. All right, Trisha from Delaware. Number four, the very first thing you got to do, Philly, is verify that the scene is safe. Verify that the scene is safe. So 
Um, those of you who pick number one, activate the emergency response. I got you on that one. All right. But anyways, you have to do that. The rescuer who arrives at the side of a potential cardiac arrest should also follow the sequential steps on the algorithm. But the first step always is going to be verify that the scene is safe. Shout out New York. Okay, let's do the next question. You guys are doing pretty good tonight, Shelley. A lot of you are two for two. A 39-year-old man doesn't respond when the nurse on duty taps his shoulders and shouts, are you okay? What is the next best action? Number one, check his pulse. Two, high quality CPR. Three, start providing rescue breaths. Four, shout for nearby help. What say if you guys? Michigan, I see you. Brazil, what's the answer? Oh, I got a lot of people picking this. Mm hmm. Okay. Are we confident on tonight? We might be. We might be. But you here, you're here to show up and learn. If you knew everything, then you would be you would be un, unable to grow. You'd be unable to grow. Okay, correct answer. I stunned somebody with this. Correct answer is shout for nearby help. We're talking about what we need to do. You asked, are you okay? All right, the next thing that you need to say is help. I need help over here. Somebody grab the AED. All right, get some people on the scene with you. All right, shout for nearby help. So this is the sequential steps of the algorithm. Verify that the scene is safe. Make sure that the scene is safe for you and the victim. After verifying automatically, the rescuer should shout for nearby help. Do you guys get that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, part of assessing the situation. Got a call for help. You got a voice. Your voice is a weapon. Use it. Okay. Question number four. The nurse on duty suspects that an unresponsive client has spinal cord injury. What is the preferred method for opening the airway? It's about content. Content is king around here. Number one, head tilt, chin lift. Two, jaw thrust. Three, head tilt, neck lift. Four, avoid opening the airway. Come on in, put the answers down. Ooh, if this was Kahoot, some of y'all would be winning. Y'all would be doing extremely well if this was Kahoot. All right. That's a good thing, though. You'll do good on your test, which is which pays more money, actually. Correct answer is, I confuse some people on here. Some people pick number one. Correct answer is number two. Don't read too much into it and don't miss out on important words. Remember, the jaw thrust maneuver is going to result in less motion. So an unstable C1, C2 injury, all right, is going to be protected, whereas compared to the head, tilt, chin, lift maneuver, okay? So we therefore recommend, watch this if you didn't get this one right, the jaw thrust, okay? To improve airway patency in trauma patients with suspected cervical spinal cord injury. Somebody put that note up there. Jaw thrust, equals suspected cervical spinal cord injury. Um, and again, we have nursing students from all different, you know, levels of education. So our new grads or, or something may not have known that one. Last question on the docket before you guys go and finish studying in V2. A nurse witnesses a man outside the hospital. Okay. Unresponsive man. Several rescuers respond and the nurse activates the nurse activates the emergency response system and to retrieve the AED. Now, upon checking for a pulse and breathing, the nurse notices that the man, the man is gasping for air and making a snorting sound. OK, he, the nurse does not feel a pulse What's the next best action of the nurse. Number one, start high quality CPR. Mm -hmm. Two, monitor the victim. Three, provide rescue breathing. Four, find somebody to help. Final one is the tricky one. The final one is the most trickiest of them all. So what do you guys say about this situation? Okay, because it says here that the man is gasping for air. Okay, the man is gasping for air. But 
at the same time, the nurse does not feel a pulse. I'm letting you guys, I'm playing this one out for you guys. Because I'm seeing all different types of answers on the screen. I mean, I'm seeing all different types. Correct answer, all right, is going to be POW, number one, start high quality CPR. Agonal gas may be present in the first minutes after sudden cardiac arrest, okay? Agonal gas are not normal breathing. Gasping is not normal breathing. It is a sign of cardiac arrest. Start high quality CPR. Beginning with chest compressions, please. Use a ratio of 30 to two breaths. Ah, compress at a rate of 100 to 200 with a depth of C, 5 cm for adults, okay? So this is it. Okay, checking for a pulse and breathing does not feel a pulse. What is the thing? All right, what is the thing to do? What is the thing to do? Oh my goodness, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today on Winning Wednesdays. We do this every Wednesday. Did you hear my alarm? Set your alarm so you don't miss these because a lot of these topics, most of you guys, and this is the thing, most of you guys, although you have quick facts and you enjoy reading quick facts, you're actually an audio learner. You actually learn by hearing things explained. So you do better when you have both. You really do better. <laughs> Tanita says, I was a safe nurse today. I love that. Okay. Um, oh, Esther says, I got three out of five and I'm not happy about it. But that's okay. Because what I'm saying is that it's good to have both. Okay quick facts and to hear it. So it's very important to do the lives. Also, I told you guys the sale for the V2 is ending. So if you are an audio visual learner, then the V2 with the lectures are going to be extremely important in how you are getting through these topics because you can read this all day. But if you're a visual learner and you're, you know, you have the need to write things down like me, it's going to be so much easier for you to get through the information. All right. And so that's just the truth. I've been on this kick about the truth about NCLEX, the truth about nursing school, the truth about NCLEX reviews. And honestly, it really depends on your learning style because the goal is not going, the goal is not for you to be in an NCLEX review forever. The goal is not for you to be in nursing school forever. The goal is for you, okay? The goal is for you to find what works best for you. There should be a lot of education put into the nursing school you go to in the NCLEX review. If you're an audiovisual learner, if you're an audiovisual learner, then you need words, you need visuals, you need to hear it, okay? And this is what my expectation, oh, look at that girl right there. Um, this is my expectation of your coursework. Do it. Get in it. Okay. The sale is $89 for three months and it is not going to take you three months to prepare. That's the beauty of it. It is going to help you get prepared so that if you're taking the test in August, you can be ready. Okay. You're taking the test in August. Nicole, I'm officially a Remart nurse. I passed my LPN. Yay. Um, Angel, again, says, I passed my NCLEX in 85 questions on July 12th. I'm rooting for you guys. You will all do well. Understanding content is key. Next gen is not bad at all. I'm really waiting for those test results. I'm really waiting to see literally what is the percentage of nursing students who have tested taking the next gen and what is their percentage of passing because man, I want to know. I hear people say, if you know the content, then you will do well. And honestly, one of the most important things that you need to understand, my, I think honestly, this right here, which one? I'm looking through the V2 and I'm trying to think of like, if, if you don't have the V2 and I needed to tell you one second, all right, I need to tell you in one second, the most important lecture in V2 man. I think the most important lecture in the V2 is probably going to be congestive heart failure. Honestly, 
I think this lecture right here is one of the most important topics in V2. And I'll tell you why, because with congestive heart failure, okay, with congestive heart failure, you can transfer so much of the information that I teach in this congestive heart failure lecture to other body systems. So with congestive heart failure, that transfers to your renal system, that transfers to pregnancy, that transfers to um, diabetes insipidus and syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, okay? So again, if you master the content, all right, if you master the important part, somebody said, no, it's pregnancy. <laughs> um, if you master the content, guys, it will really make a difference in how you approach the NCLEX exam. All right, so I'll see you guys in V2. I'm going to get off here. I'm not going to hold y'all. I'll see you in the V2, but I'm really excited. Okay. I'm really excited. Nancy, what are you saying? You said, Regina is the best. I took my NCLEX on July 21st. And after two times, I passed it. Okay. Two times. So two times. I tried UWorld, Princeton, and Archer. Um, but I got V2. I knew that is what I needed. This professor took her time to explain step by step. I would like to thank her for everything she does for us, guys. The price of V2 is nothing if you get other programs, for sure. Miss Regina or Professor Regina, thanks again, because without you, my life will be different. I am RN. Thanks to Remar and thanks to you, Mr. Remar, Mr. Remar, Mark. <laughs> okay. Nancy, I just want to thank you for coming on here and literally typing out your testimonial because I know that you guys have many options when you are choosing Remar. I know that you guys have many options and you you have gone through a long journey, okay? And I did this video about this guy here. Who who saw this video that I did? This is my Inclex failure funnel right? This is my NCLEX failure funnel. And I say that this is a very real experience for those of you who are repeat test takers and how you feel when you are just spinning around, right? You're taking NCLEX, but you're failing NCLEX. And you start off at the top of this funnel, right? You start off at the top of this funnel in a pool of nursing students and everybody is testing your first time test takers and you're doing everything that people say you should do in order to be successful. Well, what happens is you don't pass the NCLEX. And so then it puts you in a cycle of taking NCLEX, but failing it. And you go back to the resources that people use and you try to do what everybody is telling you to do, but you cannot find out why you're not passing. And so by the time I meet most of you guys, you're down here in the funnel and you have literally tried everything. You know, you've done everything that everybody is telling you to do. And you honestly just want to quit. You want to give up. I was saying this, the more times you take NCLEX, the more likely you are to fail. And that's only because you're usually just recycling the same thing that didn't work for you before. And so you're going back to it. So when people message me and they say, well, I've done UWorld, I've done Archer, I've done Kaplan, I've done everything. What makes you different? I know that they are literally, you know, I don't get offended. I, I just I try to understand that they're literally down here at the funnel and they're literally just spinning. And the further down you go, the more alone you feel, the more isolated you feel, the more incompetent you feel because you're trying to figure out why can't I pass the test? So I literally just tried to explain that I know you've invested hundreds of dollars already. And every time you take the test is $200. So literally you have spent a thousand dollars or more on NCLEX prep. And what I have to ask you to do is very hard. I have to ask you to invest $89 into yourself again and give it one more opportunity. And I have to try to convince you that this journey is worth the $89 because when you get out of this funnel, it's going to be amazing. Your life is going to be amazing. The $89, you'll make that back in an hour or two. But you got to get out of the funnel. Seven time NCLEX taker using Remar packages. I passed my NCLEX and my life has changed. I saw my first paycheck. 
was surprised with Remar. All things are possible. God bless. I can't stop thanking Regina. Tell me how much was the first check? I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know because I believe it. I understand that the seeds that you guys plant during this very difficult time, remember, all right, you are supposed to be gathering and planting when things are okay so that when the winter comes, you're set. This is summertime right now, okay? This is summertime right now. So you guys need to be preparing because winter is coming and I want you to have your license. Seven-time test taker. Oh my goodness, Sylvia. Uh, let me know how much that check was. I want to know. <laughs> um, I'm using Archer and the lectures are so long. I zone out after one hour, man. Um, and so I'll just say this too. It doesn't take long to prepare for this exam because the points are really simple and straight to the straight to the point. Like really, it doesn't take long. I am a master at explaining things very concisely. I've been doing this for over 10 years. Okay. I know how to cut it short because again, you guys will zone out. You won't pay attention. And at the end of the day, you'll keep having to pay money over and over and over again because you're not really getting through the program. So we wanted to really streamline our program. Woo, we really want to streamline our program. Um, there is partial credit in the, there is partial credit in the V2. The V2 has everything you need to be successful. All right. We do have the amazing lectures. We do cut the time in half with the study calendar. Our question bank is there with partial credit, case studies, all of it. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, yes, the lectures are different times. Some are short as eight minutes. Absolutely. Okay. All right, guys, I am out of here. Literally, Team Remar is up working hard to make sure that we get to all of you guys. OK, we, we want to make sure we have 400 people on this live. I want 400 people to pass their NCLEX. Meow. I want y'all to get this done. OK, I don't want us to have to wait till the holiday or Christmas season in order for you to get your license. So who is ready? OK, I attended RNU May 29th to June batch. You were that group. OK. <laughs> And got the quick facts. I passed my NCLEX RN last June 28th. Hey, amazing. All right. Um, okay, so let me read this. I have just tons of comments. And I like to read the comments because I think people from different backgrounds are watching. Please, Regina, are the partial credits counted in the NCLEX? Yes. Every... Um, every question in the actual NCLEX exam that has more than one answer choice that is correct, you are able to get partial credit. Now, some, 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 some questions are partial credit, but they are, um, you have a negative score. So you get a point for a correct answer, but if you don't get it right, then the, the point is taken away. OK, and so that's how our question bank is too. some questions you will get right if you do them and other questions you will get points taken away. OK. Um, partial credit. Angel says partial credit for SATA, but I recommend that you choose only what you know. Yeah, I agree with you, Angel. I agree. Um, thank you, Remar. I took NCLEX for the fifth time on July 22nd and I passed with 150 questions. Woof. Thank you. I'm a Remar RN. Man, where are you from? That's amazing. Registered nurse V2 is the best. All right. Thank you, everybody. If you need to track your quick facts, um, please send me an email. My email address is support at remarreview.com. And then I can look into your um, I can look into your account. I can look into your account. OK, and then we can see. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joan from Ghana. Oh, man, I love it. I love it when my international nurses stand up, Ghana, representing tonight, passing the NCLEX RN, holding down the nation. That is so amazing. What's stopping you from getting into the V2? We got international nurses. We got seven-time NCLEX takers that are passing their exams second time, third time, man. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Who's next? Who's next? Amazing. Amazing, amazing. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys have an amazing night. 
this was fun. This was fun. I'm coming back on Monday at 12 o'clock. Be there or be square, guys. Text me 855-696-0132. If you want to ask me specific questions, I'm out. <laughs>